We're going to cover a lot today, so we need to go fast. All right, so you heard part of the story. When I was 12, I convinced my parents to let me drop out of school and homeschool myself. So I'm quite literally a middle school dropout. This photo was actually taken a few weeks ago. <laughs> Month later, created MuggleNet, the number one Harry Potter site, and one of the largest websites of the early 2000s. And I learned a ton through this experience, because we used to, uh, and we had the New York Times bestselling book, the number one podcast in the world, used to go on tour, live like rock stars. It was wild. And my parents pretty much stayed out of my way and let me study whatever I wanted with one exception. I had to read four short biographies of successful people every single day. Predictably, this shattered my little 12-year-old brain into 10,000 pieces, and I decided that I wanted to change the world. Fast forward, decided to go to college for fun. Not a good reason to go to college. Got bored. Quickly, I was going to drop out and start another business. But the first one went well, so I wanted to go really big with the next one. I wanted to identify a model that would maximize my probability of getting to a billion by the time I was 30. The odds were not high, but I set up on this intellectual adventure. I set a goal of reading one nonfiction book every single day. Business, politics, psychology, economics, technology, science. And then I got really obsessed with learning how to learn. Because to me, learning how to learn is like the most important thing you could ever learn. Because I mean, uh, it's the root of everything else, right? It's like wishing for more wishes. And on that note, I have one tip. This is like nothing to do with anything in my talk at all, but I think everyone needs to know this. If you do this, you'll read twice as fast. Just think about it. For the rest of your life, you read twice as fast. All you have to do is really simple, too. Whenever you read, just put in headphones with white noise. You like the sound of static? Because what happens is all the time you read, you're like reading, reading, reading. What was that? Get distracted. Was that a siren going by, dog barking? Was that a threat? Not a threat. Where was I? And then it takes you 40 seconds to figure out where you left off every time. So you just sit there and reread the same stuff over and over and over again, making very little progress, getting frustrated because you're bad at reading. This is an easy way to become good at reading. Try it. So, fast forward again. I got really obsessed with uh, virality. Because to me, virality was like the ultimate form of influence, right? Because I was like, if you could make things viral, that's like having a human superpower. You could tip elections, overthrow dictators, start movements, revolutionize industries, and it worked. And then this happened. And started, created a bunch of huge you know, Facebook pages with tens of millions of followers, tens of millions of followers on Twitter, we launched 40 different websites, each of which attracted millions of monthly unique visitors. Basically, like funny iPhone autocorrects, things like that. We had like, these big meme websites. Now we've got like Dose.com, OMG Facts. Um, but really, it's not just like why things go viral. It's also just curves that go like this. Like this. So this curve right here, this shows you this is like basically all progress throughout history. What you'll notice here is that like basically we didn't do a whole lot for most of human history. All we did was like starve and kill each other. Look at this, though. Look at all these dots. Look at this. Look at all these things we've done recently. All right, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Because we don't spend enough time thinking about how fast things are really changing. Basically, look at this. No progress, lots of progress. All right, so let's go. Progress tsunamis. This is what I call like viral. We talk about viral. Basically, it's like things that don't seem like growing very fast, and they're like, whoa, what was that? Like a tsunami. A tsunami is like an earthquake in the middle of the Pacific. It's like this three inch little wave traveling a thousand miles, and then it gets close to land, and the tsunami is like, oh, hey, and they're like, Rah, eat all your cities and stuff. But it happens like that, and you don't see it coming. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. Things like that. Shanghai, look at this progress tsunami, 23 years ago. First of all, 23 years ago, this was Shanghai. Look at it now, look at this progress tsunami. Ah, progress, buildings, skyscrapers, etc. Big deal, 23 years. User-generated video, another progress tsunami. Look at this, no basic user-generated video, now everyone's got a phone, take stuff. Songs, look at all this, look at all this auditory innovation. That's amazing, right? The amount of songs being created is growing exponentially. The amount of movies being created, growing exponentially. Look at all these entertainment options, online courses. There are huge implications of this one slide alone for what the future of education looks like. Look at that, online courses. Things connected to the internet. Yay, internet. The amount of drones being created. Drones are going to revolutionize a whole lot of different industries. Big, big, big deal. The amount of words. I don't even really know why this is true, but the amount of words being created is growing exponentially. Linguistic innovation. Who doesn't get excited about that, right? Planets. All right, this one, like, just imagine. Look at, look at this. We basically like, found, like, no planets at all, and then all of a sudden, look at all those planets we just found. This is a really big deal. You don't have to be, like, a little kid, like, astronaut thinking that. Imagine, like, how, imagine this curve when it goes up to, like, all the way over here, and we found, like, 10,000 more planets. Like, amazing. Just think of what the universe might hold that we've never found before. Whew, it's exciting. All right, the amount of books. Books. The amount of books being created is growing exponentially. Of all things, right, this old format paperback. Oh, very exciting. All right, startups. Um, the amount of startups being created. Everyone wants to join a startup now, right? Look at this. You can see it in the data, too. Startups. Look at all this innovation. Think what this represents as far as how much progress we're making in society when anyone with a laptop can start, and an internet connection can start a business. The amount of knowledge being created, growing exponentially. This amount of uh, articles being uploaded to Wikipedia. We didn't know anything. Look at this. We knew nothing. Now look at all the things we know. Big deal. The amount of collaboration. This shows how many uh, articles per scientific paper. Collaboration's exploding. The amount of TV shows being created. You can argue that's bad. I think it's good. Uh, the amount of apps being created. Growing exponentially. The amount of scientific studies. Again, look at this. We didn't know anything. We knew nothing. And now look at all these things we know. That's very exciting. We're just scratching the surface of, like, knowledge. Okay, so this, what this shows right here is basically like the percentage of the world population living in extreme poverty. Basically, people are listing $2 a day. What you'll notice here is that no one lives in extreme poverty anymore. Look at this. 100 years ago, we were all poor. Again, just starving, killing each other. Now look at this. It went from like 80% of the world population in extreme poverty to like less than 10%. This is a very big deal that we're on the verge of eliminating absolute poverty. Why is no one talking about this? You read the newspaper, all you see is like a bunch of negative shit happening. 
Look at this. We're eliminating poverty. Like, this is a huge deal. Where's our ticker tape parade? Right? Why, we, why don't we have 5 million people packing the streets of Chicago and New York and L.A. celebrating one of the greatest achievements in human history? I've never seen a headline about this. I don't know about you, but this is a very big deal. Look at this. Literacy. Same thing. We couldn't read it all for, like, all of human history until very recently. Now look at this. 80% of the world was illiterate 100 years ago. Now look at this. 10% doesn't mean to read well, but at least reading. That's a big step in the right direction. Child labor. Also, Child mortality. Look at kids are not dying. This is also a very, very big deal. 40% of kids under the age of five used to die right within the first five years. Now look at this. Hardly ever. Teen birth rate. Plummeting. Homicide rates in Western Europe. What you notice here is like basically almost no one kills each other now. And we used to just sit there and kill the shit out of each other. <laughs> look at this. All we did was kill each other. That was it. We just sat around starving, killing each other. Uh, this is a big deal. So you read the headlines. It seems like every day someone got murdered. Like Chicago, murders everywhere. 600 people a year. It is a big deal. It sucks. But it's a lot less than the 60,000 per 100,000 that we used to do a long time ago, right? Violent crime rate plummeting. Yet you would never know this from the media. But the actual data shows that the, the crime rates are plummeting. The amount of people living in democracies exploding right now. This is also a very big deal. All right, I want to talk more about self-driving cars, because this is a big deal that we're not talking, enough of, uh, we're not talking about enough. So basically, here's the, here's the step. First of all, the takeaway is this. My self-driving cars exploding, growing exponentially. Look at this, McKinsey study. Widespread embrace of self-driving vehicles could eliminate 90% of all auto accidents in the U.S. 90%. Now, estimates vary. Some people estimate 99%. Some people estimate 99.9%. .9%. Some say 50%. Either way, it's a lot of lives saved. Now, if we did eliminate 90% of all auto accidents in the U.S., that would be the equivalent of preventing a 9-11 every single year. That's a huge deal, and there's significant implications of that. But let's, I want to talk about, like, self-driving cars are not in this distant future. They're here right now. Like, look at these. These are real headlines. Like, real headlines. Uber self-driving truck packed with Budweiser makes first delivery in Colorado. To make this very clear, this is a car that drives itself and delivers beer. <laughs> On the roads, delivering beer right now. Elon Musk drops his prediction of full autonomous driving from three years to just two. Not 30 years to 20, three years to two years right now. Early data, Tesla's autopilot lowers probability of having an accident by 50%. Think of all the people who die because of accidents. 50% reduction just from early data already. That's really like early crappy technology. It's going to get way better. That's a lot of lives saved. Uh, AI-controlled traffic lights in Pittsburgh. 25% faster travel times, 21% fewer emissions. Imagine sitting in your car 25% less because you get there faster. You can save months of life. Very big deal. Also, yay Earth, 20% fewer emissions. More headlines. Uber 911. In New York City, the median response time for an ambulance is 6 minutes. Uber, 2.4 minutes. You get an Uber faster than an ambulance. Think how many people die because of the six-minute time, and how many people will die when we have it down to two minutes. Lots of life savings. Man builds a self-driving car with $1,000 in computer parts. Do I need to say more? Robotics expert predicts kids born today will never drive a car. There's food for thought. All right, if cars, we have to think here, like if cars are driving themselves and the accident rate drops 90%, here's some implications. Here's why I speculate wildly, but I think you'll see that these are, well, they are wild speculations, but they're interesting to think about. All right, so what happens to these industries? The auto and life insurance industry. Car, if car accidents are down 90%, the auto insurance companies, well, they're in big trouble. Good for us, bad for them. Rates go down, right? Life insurance, people aren't dying. Good for us, bad for life insurance companies. Auto body shops, again, good for us, bad for auto body shops. Trucking and delivery, three million people drive trucks. Not good for those jobs that are being lost, but again, good for progress of society as a whole. Hotels. If you don't need to drive, you don't need to design cars where people are sitting there with their hands in the wheel, and you can design cars with anything. You can design little mini hotel rooms and wheels, right? Go to sleep, wake up in the, you know, cross country. Why do you need to stay in a hotel? Planes, uh, planes, buses, and trains. Again, why do you need to take a plane or a bus or a train? You can just fall asleep and wake up in your destination inside your awesome self-driving car. Radio and podcasts. Think of this. We spend 46 minutes a day every single day with our eyes locked on the road driving. Imagine what happens. We don't have to do that anymore. That's 46 minutes. We can look at screens and do other stuff with. So that, those entertainment mediums will change. Healthcare. I saw an estimate. $500 billion potentially sucked to the healthcare system for people not dying and getting hurt in cars. Again, maybe bad for healthcare. Probably not. But very good for us, right? Organ donations. One in five organ donations right now come from people who die in self-driving car, in, in car accidents. Again, very, very big deal. That's a problem we we'll have to solve, but a good problem. All right, now let's talk about VR and AR, because I don't think we're, we're spending time thinking about the implications of this. First of all, a couple things. One, exploding, right? The amount of uh, virtual reality headsets exploding, the amount of content being created virtual reality exploding. More implications. Think of real estate. Okay, first of all, we have to fast forward. Don't think of like, the clunky VR experience now, which is cool. You have to imagine it being 99% as realistic as real life, because we're not that far away from actually getting to that point. That'll happen in our lifetime. Real estate. Right now, real estate agents use it. You can like, sample different places, but you've got to think bigger than that. Because if, we're spend, if, if you can create any reality inside virtual reality, you don't necessarily need to spend all your time in real reality and then occasionally in virtual reality. You might spend the majority of your time inside virtual reality. So like, why buy for a million dollar mansion if you can just get a million dollar mansion equivalent in virtual reality for like, a fraction of the cost, right? Live events. You don't need to go to concerts, traveling, sporting events, things like that. 99% realistic. Just lock in your headset. 
Travel, business travel. I go to New York all the time. It takes me like half a day to get there, half a day to get back for like sometimes two meetings. Why do that if I can just have a 99% realistic experience inside virtual reality? Tourism, again, traveling places is cool, but like why do you need to spend thousands of dollars on a full day of travel to go to Australia if you can have like a 99% realistic experience inside virtual reality? Big implications there. Shipping and transportation. We don't need to ship stuff. Inside virtual reality, things don't cost money to move. Gaming, obvious. Sex work, prostitution, this one's interesting. Porn is obvious, we don't need to talk about that. But think about like prostitution as an industry where suddenly now all the risk and dangers of like STIs and, and you know, abuse and things like that, suddenly you don't need that. If you get 90% of the same realistic experience inside virtual reality, that industry just goes poof. So what they say, pimping ain't easy. <laughs> I just came up with that right now. That was good. Oh man, I thought that was, that was good, okay. Um, all right, so now we gotta talk about solar. This is another huge, 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 hugely important thing. First of all, notice this. Solar, in 2016, solar hit a major milestone. Basically, solar became cheaper than coal for the first time in history. This is huge. And look at this. Even before it became cheaper, the amount of solar being installed growing exponentially. Look at this chart. Coal is growing in cost. Solar is plummeting in cost. So coal is becoming economically unviable. So this means like no tree hugging required. Solar is the big winner. Fossil fuels, we could say, are dinosaur energy. Get it? Because... Get it? Because like, it's just dinosaurs in the ground, and then also it's like dinosaurs like old technology and stuff. See, that's how you know to get it, because that guy. <laughs> it's, it's good, right? All right. I know you're not supposed to explain jokes, but I carve my own path. All right, more headlines. These are not headlines from right now. Renewables just passed coal as the largest source of new electricity worldwide. Again, think of all, like, the, think of all the environmental movement, all the actions, regulation, things like that. Nope, it's already happening. Renewables pass coal because of the cost, economics. Six major countries, including Canada, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, and Finland, all announced the imminent phase-out of all coal power plants. Again, not for environmental reasons necessarily, for economic reasons. France announced in 2023 they're shutting down their coal power plants. Britain, 2025. That's like five and seven years away because of economics. Very, very big deal. We shouldn't be talking about building new coal power plants. We can't shut the ones we already have down because they're not going to be economically viable. All right, Tesla's solar roof to cost less than a regular roof. You didn't hear about this. Tesla announced these roofs. Basically, solar panels throughout the whole roof. They look just like a regular, you don't have the ugly solar panels. And they're cheaper even before you add in the energy savings of being able to generate electricity from your roof. Very big deal. Solar-powered pipe desalinates billions of gallons of drinking water here for California. Water shortage is a very big problem. You got lots of salt water, not a lot of fresh water. Not a big deal at all if we have cheap energy and we can turn that salt water into fresh water, and that's exactly what's happening. More things that are actually happening right now. Man lives 555 days on a heart machine he carried in a backpack. What could I possibly say? A heart he carried in his backpack, staying alive. Medicine is amazing. Three men had their hands amputated and replaced by prosthetic hands they control with their minds. Not sci-fi, not Star Wars, happening right now. Human radiologists missed 7% of cancers in a study. A deep learning algorithm missed 0%. Again, yay humans, right? 7% is pretty good. 93% of cancer is caught. That's, the only people died because of this 7% error rate. The only people aren't going to die when this kind of stuff happens more and more, which it is. Researchers find missing link between the brain and immune system. Translation, mind over matter. We don't have time to go into that, but that's really interesting. For the first time, scientists actually found a real link between what you think and how your body responds to illness. Um, skin gun helps burn victims quickly regrow skin by spraying them with their own stem cells. Bam, bam, skin regrown. Whoa. I mean, I think that's super cool. Let's think about that, like scars, things like that. Okay, doctors just reverse severe MS using stem cells. Biohackers figured out how to inject your eyeballs with night vision. FDA-approved exoskeleton allows paralyzed people to walk. Same exoskeleton also makes you super strong, super even strength, be a superhero. Two students created a device that uses sound waves to extinguish fires. Think of the implications of this. Instead of having to get water, like transport in helicopters and drop it over in California and bring down hundreds of millions of acres of land a year, we just like, pow, pow, gun that shoots sound waves. And I mean, that's, I just think it's super cool. Uh, Lab-grown meat, 30,000 times cheaper than 18 months ago. If you don't hear about this, basically, the idea of lab-grown meat is that we don't have to like raise a bunch of animals, feed them tons of corn and stuff, and then slaughter them in huge quantities to be able to like eat stuff. We can actually just like grow the stuff from the ground up, which sounds really gross, right? You, who would do that? The thing is, you will do that, because here's what's gonna happen. The cost of that is gonna become way, way, way cheaper than animal meat. So unless you wanna go pay like 10 times more for real meat, and also then there's the, there's the I'm not getting, making any like moral judgments here, I love meat, meat's wonderful, but like, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna slaughter a lot of animals to like feed the people, right? So you can do it this way, and the cost comes on that much, and it, by the way, it's, it's chemically identical. Like, it will be chemically kind of identical. Like, there's no difference. You won't be able to tell the difference between, like, stuff that came from an animal that was killed and stuff that came from an animal that wasn't. Uh, this is one of those things to look out for. This will happen in our lifetimes. Um, again, with my overly optimistic uh, predictions. Uh, NASA plans mission to a metal-rich uh, metal asteroid worth quadrillions. Again, not Star Wars stuff. Like, NASA's already planning, we're going to go land on this asteroid, mine it, cool it. By the way, there's like $100 trillion in the world. So quadrillions is a lot of money. Put it that way. Think of the implications of that. 
All right, League of Legends ratings top NBA Finals and World Series. If you don't know about this, eSports are like the future of sports. eSports are like video game sports. League of Legends is one of those games. More people watch the League of Legends Championship than the NBA Finals and the World Series. So there's another one of those things to keep an eye out for because eSports are exploding. Scientists can now make lithium-ion batteries last a lifetime. Again, I don't need to sell this one, right? Like, imagine your phone battery lasting a lifetime and all the other things that matter. All right, a man suffered a heart clot at the wheel, and his Tesla drove him to the hospital. Again, think of people don't have to die. You don't have to wait two minutes for the Uber. Your car will just drive you itself. Big, big, big deal. First home brain implant lets locked-in women play games. Basically, the woman's total vegetable frozen every way, and now, with, because of a brain implant, she can like, play games and stuff with her mind and eventually communicate with her mind. Again, very big deal. Think about your life would have sucked before and how much more awesome it's going to be now. And all these people have the same kinds of problems. Amazon wins patent for a flying warehouse that will deploy drones to deliver packages in minutes. Just think of that, like a flying warehouse, just zooming, sending drones out. You order something and within minutes is at your door. Gone are going to be the days. We have to wait like days for stuff to come in the mail. 3D printers will have that happen instantly too. An AI system read breast x-rays 30 times faster than doctors with 20% greater accuracy. 20% greater accuracy. Again, think of all the people who die because of the, the error rates we have right now because humans are imperfect. Again, humans are great, but we're not perfect, right? Stanford announces that it has found a way to reverse symptoms of a stroke. Man detects an exoplanet with household equipment, some plywood, an Arduino, and a normal digital camera. He found a planet with stuff you can buy at Home Depot. And he made a video of it, he put it online to show other people how to do it too. Think of all the new planets we're going to discover because of things like this. Two teenage girls built Africa's first ever private satellite. Teenage girls. Lego architecture. Company uses recycled plastic boxes to build homes for 5,000 bucks. Imagine homelessness in a world where you can create homes for 5,000 bucks. Very big deal. All right, Obama said we'll be debating unconditional free money over the next 10 or 20 years. If you haven't heard of this, you're going to hear about this a lot more. The idea is called basic income. The idea is that like, we just give people money to live off of, and we're like, all right, you're good. That sounds insane. I know that sounds like the craziest thing you've ever heard of. You've heard of that idea before, and it doesn't seem remotely feasible. But a lot of these things are going to take away a lot of jobs, and suddenly the idea of giving people money isn't going to seem crazy at all. So that's just one of those ideas to keep an eye out for, because that's going to happen more and more and more, like that conversation. Uh, the very first film was written entirely by an algorithm. A 19-year-old made a free robot lawyer that has appealed $3 million in parking tickets. Bad for lawyers, good for us. <laughs> LG show, a TV that you can roll up like a newspaper. A robot chef that can cook 2,000 meals. Go on sale in 2017. Household one. You can buy it. You can afford it. It's a chef, like your own private chef. Push button, 2,000 meals. The first water shark was released in the Rotterdam port. This is a water drone that eats plastic. Again, think of the implications of this for, like, nature and stuff. You know, Mother Earth. Like the giant Pacific you know, trash pile. Whew, water drones. Elon Musk says there's a one in billions chance reality is not a simulation. Basically, in other words, Elon Musk is 99.99% sure that this world that we live in is actually a computer simulation, almost like a video game. Again, sounds insane, but fast forward in time 10 years, this will actually be a, a commonly held theory of the world. A lot of people are going to come around to this. Uh, there's a lot of very smart Nobel Prize winning physicists who think this is true as well. Goodbye, human translators. Google's within striking distance of human level translation. In other words, Google is like this close to having like a box. I talk in this and translate into any language in the world fluency level instantaneously. Think of how that'll bring people together. And also think about the implications of learning languages. Like, why learn languages if Google's got this thing coming out right around the corner that you can just not have to learn a language and speak the language? That's a big deal. Man has vision restored with bionic eye. Scientists discovered how to regenerate human skin. Scientists reverse aging in mammals. They're 10 years away from human trials. Reverse aging, just to really draw attention to that point. Lab-grown kidneys have been successfully transplanted animals. Basically, like, lab, science, beakers and stuff, and then, poof, kidney. Not like cut, cut out kidney, put an animal. Like, we're, that's, that's happening right now. Other, other animals, too, uh, things, too. Scientists uh, develop an eye drop that can dissolve cataracts. Eye drop, cataract gone. Again, amazing. These are, like, real things that are happening right now. And this is my personal favorite one. Researchers find a way to structure sugar so 40% less sugar can be used without affecting the taste. Starting to be available in 2018. Now, we can all get around something, right? That's when we can get united around. Thank you.